Hello everyone. In this video, we'll revisit the iconic game Knights and Merchants for Many, and I'll bring you closer to the subsequent fate of this series. But before we start, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Now let's dive into the content, let's go. Everything began in early 1997, shortly after the founding of Joymania Entertainment. Initially, the game didn't have a specific title, just an internal name used by the Joymania studio. At that time, the company had no contract with any publisher, which meant all expenses came directly from the developers' pockets. Peter Ullman and Adam Spryce made many personal sacrifices to fund the game without receiving a regular salary. Peter Ullman and Adam Spryce previously worked for Blue Byte Software. A significant inspiration for their new project was the game The Settlers, which they had worked on in their former company. This influence was mainly evident in file formats and graphics, especially the interface. When the game was well advanced, Joymania started looking for a publisher. After talks with various companies, the best offer came from Topware Interactive. The agreement proposed launching the game under the title Knights and Merchants in the fall of 1998. Topware also promised to finance further game development and acquire intellectual property rights. 18 months after work commenced, on June 2nd, 1998, the game's first demo version was released. It was version 0 0.73, indicating that the final product would differ significantly. Feedback led to minor changes, and by June 11th, 1998, another demo was available in both German and English. International negotiations and the game's release in various countries. Though Topware could release the game primarily in German-speaking countries, negotiations with other publishers enabled its introduction in markets like the UK, and the USA. In August, the German version was officially released, and by September it was available in the UK. In October, it reached the United States. The game was translated into many languages, including Italian, Spanish, French, Czech, Hungarian, Dutch, and Polish. Game updates addressing bugs were also released in different countries. The game finally launched in Germany on September 18th, and gradually in other regions thereafter. It came out at a prime time for RTS games, when they weren't niche, and players frequently played such titles. We have two modes to choose from, and excluding the tutorial. A single map, where we select one of several terrains and start building our city from scratch to eventually wipe out our rivals. There's also a campaign, originally only available as the Shattered Kingdom. Here we must defend our kingdom against hostile forces. Missions vary, but primarily focus on eliminating military targets. The graphics are still pleasing to the eye, perhaps except for the low resolution. It bears a similar ambience to The Settlers 2. Animations are smooth, and the music fits perfectly. The gameplay mechanics are also somewhat similar to The Settlers series. Knights and Merchants focuses mainly on creating a thriving, self-sufficient economic system in our settlement. As administrators, we decide on the location and type of buildings and the training of units. However, we must be careful not to disrupt the resource balance. Those familiar with the settlers will notice similarities. Yet, uh, Knights and Merchants brings in some interesting elements. For instance, you decide on the number and types of farms, their location, and the size of cultivated fields. After establishing these structures, peasants are trained to manage them. Subsequent steps involve building a mill to convert grain into flour, later used to bake bread in the bakery. Various food items like bread, wine, fish introduced in an expansion or a sausage have different energy values and production processes. These products go to inns for residents with excess stored in a granary for soldiers. Another vital element is ensuring an optimal road network and an adequate number of workers for the settlement to thrive. Workers independently choose their paths and objectives, which can sometimes be problematic due to flawed AI. At first glance, Knights and Merchants may seem simple due to its limited number of buildings and units, but its complexity lies in the intricate interweaving of various economic elements. Deep planning and thorough consideration of every move are required. Regarding combat mechanics, Knights and Merchants, despite some imperfections, outperforms several games from a similar period. Equipping our troops demands the production of weaponry, swords, shields, lances, etc. Later sent to fortresses. There, trained recruits receive their gear. Although the variety of soldiers isn't vast, we have diverse units. Infantry, archers, and cavalry, each with distinct traits. For example, pikemen are effective against cavalry, but less so against units with axes or swords. Therefore, having a diversified force is crucial. 
Interestingly, soldiers often operate in organised squads rather than individually. They fight in these formations to the last man, which some players criticise due to the lack of tactical retreat or accidental combat engagements. Nevertheless, such mechanics require a different approach to planning. In Knights and Merchants, players set formations, divide soldiers into specified rows and columns, and direct them to strategic battle spots. A significant drawback is the inability to select multiple squads simultaneously and poor AI causing formations to break easily with soldiers marching in a line. In my opinion, battles are the game's weaker aspect. The real joy comes from observing and expanding our settlement. Another issue is the opponents, primarily their lackluster AI and an uneven start. Computer rivals begin with a small army, which doesn't seem to grow, and a few buildings. It feels like the computer opponents are static. Knights and merchants reviews varied widely, from 4 to even 8 out of 10, mostly hovering around 6, 7, 10. Now let's delve into the story of the expansion's creation. The development history of the Peasants' Rebellion is more intricate than it might appear at first glance. Everything started on December 21st, 1998, when Achim Heideloff revealed the first details about the planned expansion for the original game. It was announced that there would be 15 new missions, 2 new buildings, 4 new soldiers, 1 new inhabitant, improved landscape graphics and much more. In February, more information emerged about the progress of the expansion. It was then revealed that one of the new buildings would be a fisherman's hut and the new inhabitant would be a fisherman. Unfortunately, the launch was postponed to April due to financial issues with Topware Interactive. Later, we learned that all the new military units would be mercenaries, which could be hired using gold. The second new building was supposed to be a town hall where you could employ these mercenaries. In April, when everyone was anticipating the launch, Topware Interactive announced financial problems, leading to a halt in the expansion's development. It was only after a year and a half that plans were disclosed to release the expansion as a free add-on for the Shattered Kingdom in 2001. Despite promises, the free add-on was never released. In May, it was announced that the expansion, previously known as Mission CD, was renamed to Knights and Merchants, the Peasants' Rebellion, and its launch was set for September 2001. Unfortunately, the production faced further delays. Finally, after many adversities, the game was first released in Poland on November 26, 2001, followed by Germany, Austria and Switzerland a day later. Unfortunately, the reviews were mixed. Though the game scored an average of 5, 7 out of 10, it still sold better than, for example, the competing RTS game Earth 2150. Narratively, the campaign was nearly a carbon copy of the original version. As mentioned earlier, several buildings were added to the game. The Fisherman's Hut introduced a new type of food, while the workshop allowed for the production of siege machines. They were notably slow, but dealt significant damage. Meanwhile, the town hall enabled the recruitment of new unit types directly using gold chests, eliminating the need for weapons production, much like in the workers' school. This innovation wasn't well received among the game's conservative fans. In 2013, the game was released on the Steam platform, bundled with the expansion and an HD version. This version, other than supporting higher resolutions, was identical. On this platform, Knights and Merchants has an overall very positive rating, based on 2,351 reviews, 86% positive. As you can see, it has stood the test of time and continues to bring joy to new players and those revisiting it after years. It's worth mentioning the fan-made project KM Remake, initially released in 2009. KM Remake is a revival of the original Knights and Merchants game, developed since 2008. The main goal was to ensure better compatibility with modern computers and fix bugs present in the original titles. Ultimately, the engine features significantly surpass those of the original game, in addition to a greatly enhanced multiplayer experience, it also supports much more advanced missions. This version introduced features like an integrated map editor, a multiplayer lobby for easier game connections, improved AI, zoomable camera, support for high resolutions, and better unit balance. In conclusion, we must touch upon the never-released sequel, Knights and Merchants 2. After the 1998 release of Knights and Merchants, the gaming community eagerly anticipated a sequel. However, those expectations were dashed when it was announced that the developers were focusing on an expansion titled The Peasants' Rebellion. 
As this expansion neared its completion, speculations about the sequel intensified, though initial reports suggested that the second installment was under development. It turned out that its development had been cancelled. Reports indicated that Knights and Merchants 2 Inches development started later than anticipated. Many thought the developers were occupied with a new project, but in reality they were focused on the Cultures game series at Funatic's development. The first solid details about the sequel came in 2001 from Peter Ullman, who shared his vision for the continuation. Ullman pointed to the challenges of creating a sequel, emphasizing the need to introduce innovations and fresh ideas in every game. He mentioned other companies like Blizzard, who spend years developing sequels to their hits. After finishing The Peasant's Rebellion, both Ullman and Adam Spryce joined Similis Software to raise the game's standards. The initial sequel project was to rely on 2D graphics, but due to technological limitations, the team opted for a richer colour palette. The game also had a working title of Princedom. Regrettably, the prototype of this version caused some controversies within the team, especially considering the rising popularity of 3D games. And they eventually decided to abandon 2D in favour of 3D graphics. Despite certain innovations, the new version didn't capture the original game's spirit, leading to the project's cancellation. Many years later, in 2003, attempts were made to reconnect with Zaxxas Entertainment about a potential continuation, but the response was not promising. Dirk P. Hassinger from Zaxxi highlighted financial challenges and the risks associated with creating such a production, especially in the face of market competition. In 2006, Allman added that they didn't own the rights to Knights and Merchants, making a sequel even more uncertain. Despite these challenges, fans of the series still hold out hope for a return to the Knights and Merchants world. That's all for this material. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments which game series you'd like to see covered next. Until next time.